Hey, what's going on guys? What's happening? YouTube, you guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. Today is April 20th. It's 420. Happy 420, guys. Uh, light something up. Put something in the air for me. Uh, enjoy the afternoon. Uh, I got a few things I got to do before, the, uh, before I kind of start the festivities off. Um, I wanted to get a video out. I felt like it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be right if I didn't wish you guys a happy 420, so I wanted to put something out today. Um, and I, I still got to go for my run. Got a few other things I got to do, and then uh, I'm going to go get some burritos and hang out with some friends. Uh, but anyhow, I wanted to talk about PayPal rolling reserves today. Uh, and rolling reserves aren't unique to PayPal. They happen with all merchant processors. They happen with Shopify payments, Stripe, uh, even real merchant processors like First Data, Vantive, etc., uh, you're much less likely to run into these issues with a, a real merchant processor as opposed to like a third-party aggregator, like a Stripe, a Shopify payments, a PayPal. Um, I've made a couple videos on this topic in the past, but a lot of more a couple years ago, like probably 2015, 2016. Uh, so wanted to put out another video. Basically what a rolling reserve is, when you're selling online, uh, the company who's processing for you, again, it could be PayPal, could be Stripe. Uh, they come to you and say, oh, you know, there's something risky about your business we need to hold back a percentage of the sales. So um, with a real merchant processor, if this does happen to you, it'll probably be 10% of sales held back for anywhere from 30 days, 90 days, or even as long as six months. Much less common with a real merchant processor than it is with a PayPal, a Stripe, a Shopify payments. With PayPal, Stripe, Shopify payments, they might hit you up one day, and it could be because you've had a lot of returns, could be because you've had a lot of chargebacks or PayPal claims opened could be uh, just a spike in volume, right? It could be nothing weird, but just you went from 3,000 in sales a month to 75,000 in sales a month. And you're like, wow, wow this is a, a pretty big spike. It almost hurts your business to grow too quickly because some merchant processors, especially these third-party aggregators, will get finicky with you. Uh, what happened to me, my business, at the time we were eBay and we had our, our first website, uh, I think we did 250,000 in sales in a single month. Uh, which sounds really impressive. In reality, we were making shit margins at the time. Like a lot of what we were doing, we were almost operating at break even just because the su supply chain wasn't really in place and we didn't want people going elsewhere. So even though we were doing a huge amount of sales, we were making more money when we were doing 100,000 a month with much better margins than we were doing a quarter million a month, but not making shit per order. Anyhow, from what I've heard, 250000 a month is that number that automatically triggers PayPal to, you know, really kind of crack down and, and look at the risk of your business. Now, for probably a good year prior to this, we'd had a PayPal, um, like, representative, you know, or our own representative for our account. Uh, but she didn't contact us. Uh, risk and compliance contacted us. Uh, they said, look, we're not comfortable. Or no, that was when they kicked us off. Risk and compliance contacted us. And they said, look, we, we need to do a reserve. Um, they wound up taking 10 grand off the top. So they took 10 grand right out of the PayPal account and kind of put it into a, uh, an emergency slush fund. And then they said, we're going to keep 25% of your payments. I want to say it's 25. It might've been as high as 30. I want to say it was 25. We're going to keep 25% of your payments back for 90 days. Now, at the time we were probably making somewhere between 10 and 15% margins. So uh, in a sense, even though ultimately at the end of the day, I would get all of this money back. Um, for a period of 90 days, it, it, it kind of got to a point where the more I sold, the digger, the bigger a hole I dug myself. So, you know, I sell something for a hundred dollars, uh, PayPal keeps, what's that? We'll say $30. Um, and I'm really only making $11. So over the course of this 90 days, the more I sell, the deeper a hole I'm digging myself. And eventually it gets to the point where I just don't have money to order inventory. So uh, that was definitely a big problem for our business. We raised prices a little bit, which kind of slowed down sales and gave us a better margin. Uh, fortunately, I, I also had a couple suppliers who were actually pretty cool, pretty understanding, uh, had been dealing with us for a while, knew we were making money, and you know they were willing to float us for you know two weeks, 30 days to allow us to get to that point where money was released. So we were able to get past it. Uh, it wasn't too much longer after that that we got a call from Risk and Compliance with our account rep on the phone, and they were like... Uh, I forget her name, Carrie or something. You know, Carrie, have you told them what's going on yet? Uh, no, I haven't had a chance to. Uh, yeah, we're sorry. Uh, we're uncomfortable with the volume that you're, you know, rarely if ever had chargebacks. I think I probably had maybe one or two chargebacks over the course of doing huge amounts of volume with them each month for a period of years, probably three, four years. Um, they tell us they're not comfortable with our volume because we've never had any issues and have been stellar customers. Rather than shutting us down right that day, 
Uh, they told us they were going to give us 30 days to find a new processor. Now, all in all, it wound up taking me almost four months uh, to find a processor. I wound up contacting over 300 processors, literally picking up the phone, calling 300 processors before I found one willing to take us on. The one we wound up going with wound up charging us almost 7%. That's double, maybe even triple what, what your average business can uh, can expect to pay for processing. And during that three or four months we were shut down, I shouldn't say we were shut down, but during that three or four months we couldn't take payments, I was trying to do everything I could, right? Like I was trying to do crypto. Uh, we were doing e-checks for a while. E-checks didn't really work out. There's another company called Cash, K-A-S-H. Uh, that's like an ACH through the bank account. E-checks and ACH tend to be like less stringent than, than credit card companies. Uh, but there was a period where like sales were down to probably 90, 95% because we couldn't take credit cards and most people expect to be able to pay by cards. Um, but anyhow, that was my experience with the PayPal rolling reserve. I think at one point we had over $125,000 tied up in PayPal rolling reserves. Like it can really hamper a business. So anyhow, I got an email from a guy. He says, PayPal's holding 30% for a 90 day rolling period. Help. Uh, so he goes on to say, so I'm relatively new to e-commerce, started at the end of January, moving along up to the start of April. In the first couple weeks of April, we moved from $400 a day to 10K a day in revenue. I, I wonder if he means sales. I think he probably means sales, not, not actual revenue, but... Uh, naturally a lot of people wanted to, wanted to do checks, credit card provider, my bank, Shopify payments, etc. Then PayPal halted my withdrawals and a few days later slapped me with a 30% rolling reserve and a 90 day hold. Yikes. Um, this is pretty bad for cash flow. Two third of customers using PayPal. This means PayPal are going to be holding 20% of my daily sales for 90 days. I'm speaking to the merchant team tomorrow to see if they will negotiate uh, a little off the percentage as 30% in my eyes is crazy. We've done over 7,000 orders and only had around three cases. I know there might be more down the road, but even still, my question for you is, if you've been in this situation, how can I deal with cash flow problems this is gonna bring me? I wanna continue to use PayPal and will eat pretty much, but it will eat pretty much all my margins. I won't be able to continue scaling and any expected issues could be a real headache. Uh, removing PayPal as a gateway is a last resort for me as I believe it'll hurt my conversions by about 20 to 30%. Uh, any advice is welcome. This is the most stressful period of my life right now. So, um, you know, a couple things. First off, it's it sounds, and we did kind of chat a little bit after this as well. It sounds like he actually is at least making 30% margins. Maybe he won't have money to grow, but at the very least he, he's able to, to, to sustain himself and one thing you have to keep in mind is, yeah, this is going to eat margins, but on the 91st day, you get day one back. On the 92nd day, you get day two back. So all this money is, is eventually coming back to you. I get that it hurts cash flow. I get that it's hard to, to grow when this is going on, uh, but at least you can sustain it. In my case, I, it wasn't something that I could sustain. I was, you know, eventually I would get to the point where I would run out of money. Um, and I know he did, I chatted with him a little bit more after this. He didn't want to remove PayPal. I would say remove PayPal. I know people like PayPal. Uh, with my e-commerce store, as well as some stores that I manage that don't take PayPal, occasionally they'll get calls and say, hey, do you take PayPal? And you know, there are a couple customers who won't buy from you if you don't take PayPal. Uh, you know, so be it. They, they, they can go away. Um, you know, PayPal is great. I, I get it. Even as a business owner, I liked it. It, it helped me stay organized. Uh, I liked that I could print labels through there. Uh, at one point with my e-commerce business, I didn't really have a good order management system set up. So PayPal actually like was how I kept myself organized and uploaded tracking numbers and knew what was coming in. So I get that PayPal is attractive, but at the end of the day, if you get rid of PayPal, you're not going to lose nearly as many customers as you think you will. And if you have a trustworthy site and you build relationships with your customers, it's not going to be a huge deal. I'd be curious, you know, actually, you know, let's take a look here. What percentage of e-commerce stores take PayPal? Okay, so 36% uh, of e-commerce stores take PayPal. It's hardly a majority. Um, in some industries, you know, trust may be a, a, a bigger issue, but uh, it's definitely not something that you can't get past. So my, my suggestion would be uh, get rid of PayPal today. Uh, another thing I kind of told this gentleman was, you know, he, so right now he's got Shopify payments and he's got PayPal. PayPal and Shopify payments are both super finicky. They'll both throw you off at the drop of a hat. The, the way these these platforms work, they're, they're what's called third-party aggregators. So you don't have a merchant account when you have PayPal or when you have Stripe. You're bundled in 
with dozens of other people, hundreds of other people, thousands of other people, you're kind of all bundled in on one account. And, and so if you cause any problems, you're potentially causing problems for an account that has hundreds or thousands of other people on that account as well. And that's why these platforms are so strict, plus they make it so quick and easy to get set up. It's a lot easier for them to, uh, for them to be scammed. Uh, when I had my, uh, my first real merchant processing account set up, it was kind of a headache. I had to fill out an application. We had to do credit checks. They actually wound up sending out some type of auditor to our, our, our office, and the guy had to take pictures of the outside storefront. He had to take pictures of our inventory. He had to take pictures of our site, of our safe. He needed pictures of our products. Like They really kind of dug in to make sure like this is a real business. This isn't someone who's going to run up six figures worth of charges and disappear tomorrow. So yeah, it's a little bit more of a headache to get set up, but it's also not going to go away like that the first time your volume picks up, uh, the first time you have a chargeback, the first time you have a little flurry of returns. So my advice would be get rid of PayPal. He really didn't want to do that. But at the very least, uh, I wouldn't consider Stripe, aka Shopify Payments, my backup processor. I would go get a real processor. Go to your bank. They're probably set up with First Data or Vantive. Uh, they can probably get you set up. There's a million other companies you can reach out to. And if you do happen to fall into the high risk category, which, which this gentleman didn't, which is going to make his life a whole lot easier. Uh, but if you do happen to fall into high risk, there's a couple different good high risk processes out there. Uh, Durango is a good one. Another one that I've always used is Charge, which I'll link to Charge uh, down below for anybody who, uh, who might be in a similar situation. But if any of you guys have questions about uh, PayPal rolling reserves, rolling reserves in general, uh, feel free to reach out with out to me uh, or drop a comment. I'd be happy to, to follow up and answer it. Um, payment processing is one of the areas that I've become pretty adept at just because it's been nothing but headaches for me. It's, it seems like every business that I'm attracted to tends to be high risk. Um, my previous business was high risk. I've done some stuff in like the CBD space and the weed space, uh, which is high risk, hard to get processing. Uh, and even normal things like hoverboards, which you would think would be pretty normal, uh, that quickly became high risk as well. So I, you know, I, I've definitely uh, been around a block or two in the high risk space. I've been scammed a few times in the high risk space. Fuck you, Tony, if you're watching. Uh, Tony's a guy, he, a guy here in Chicago that, that got me for a couple grand. Uh, but yeah, if you guys got questions about high risk processing, PayPal putting holds on you, feel free to drop them below. I'd be happy to, to answer them. And I'm sure some other people in the community maybe have run into some issues as well. So uh, that's all we really, really got for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, hopefully all you guys have a, a happy and healthy 420. Be safe out there. Um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one later.